April favorites. I'm so excited to get this out of the way because April was just so stressful and now that it's finally over it's just one more month closer to Christmas. So let's get straight into it. Now I'm sure you've noticed my change in background. If you haven't that's okay but I did this all by myself. Aren't you proud of me? I like even hung up those lights. That cloth is actually stuck up with double-sided tape so any minute right now any second it could just fall down. But what I really wanted to show you was these pillowcases behind me, minus this one. Um, I talked to you about my Zara Home Obsession last month and I actually bought something this time. I bought two pillowcases and I don't know if you can tell but I'm obsessed with like the rainforest print at the moment so voila! I had to get these pillowcases. It did cost me like 50 $60 Australian for two, which is a massive ripoff, but they're so lovely and I honestly swear that I sleep better now that I sleep with these pillowcases. And just look how like fitting it goes with my whole rainforest themed bedroom. Probably a little late to talk about this, but my Kiki K Diary, the 2015 one, I got it at the start of the year when I was in Australia, but I just, I'm the type of person that has to write everything down. Like if I put it in my phone, then I won't really remember it. And I just find it really soothing to write stuff down that I have to do and be able to, you know, tick them off. Even if I've already done something and I haven't written it down, I'll write it down just so I can tick it off. That, that satisfaction of knowing that you completed something. So I picked this one. It's the lilac one. And it's a weekly diary because I like seeing everything on like one page that I can see what's happening for the entire week. So that's what it looks like. And it comes with these really cute stickers too. So you know there's a plane and if you're going to fly somewhere you can stick the plane sticker and if it's someone's birthday you can stick the cake sticker. So yeah, the one thing that I don't really like about it is that it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday like horizontally. Like sometimes I get confused and I think it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But yeah, that's about it. And there's also like you know, an expenses side where you can note down where all your money is going because lately a lot of my money is disappearing so I found that quite useful. Turn into a bit of an accountant as well. So yeah, that's what it looks like and I just write down what classes I have and things I have to do and appointments and what not. This was quite expensive. I find, I think it was like 40-ish dollars so I did get the A3 size because the small one's too small and the big one's just too big. I find this one perfect. I carry it in my bag and I carry it with me every single day just in case something pops into my mind. I'm really excited to share this next thing with you. I call it the Magic Swiss Biz. I got this from Korea. It's Etude House's Remover Bar and what it is, it's just like your normal Swiss bar, right? But you can see that there's like a loopy thing here and you just unloop it and then this liquid pours onto one end and it's just like an eye makeup remover because when I use um face wipes and I'm like full digging into my eye I feel like it's really bad and then all these eyes just start to fall out and I'm like no I only have like 12 of you please don't leave me so this is really gentle and you just kind of just move around like that and then you use the other dry clean and, and you use the <laughs> other dry clean end to wipe away anything and I think usually I'll use one for one eye so you go through them pretty quickly but I love them and another thing that I'm loving at the moment is all of Sukin's products. They're like eco-friendly and no animal testing, no synthetic fragrances, no artificial colors, no parabens. Australian owned and made 100% vegan and 100% carbon neutral. So these are beautiful. What I've got here is the antioxidant eye serum. My mom said that I was getting crow's feet around my eyes last time I went back to China. I mean, Melbourne. Because I smile so much, and when I smile, I just scrunch up my eyes like this. So I have these wrinkles here. And I've been putting this on probably once a day, sometimes twice a day, if my eyes are really puffy. And I just put a little squirt onto my fingertip. And apparently, I read somewhere that the fourth finger has the least amount of pressure. So that's what I use for my eye cream. And then just go like this. And I put it on my eyelid too. I'm not sure if I'm meant to put it on my eyelid, but it just makes me feel better. And I feel like it's improving. Like, I don't feel like I have that much crow's feet anymore. So, yeah. Now I've also got a scent for you. In Shanghai, it is spring. Actually, it's more like summer. It's like 26 degrees and super sunny today. Take a look. Um, there's really not much transitional seasons in Shanghai. You either get your freezing winter or you get your really, really hot summers. And for the past few weeks, actually, I've stuck to this fragrance. It's just the DKNY Dickney. <laughs> DKNY Be Delicious, the green one. I got this in the rolly form in when I was in LA because I have perfumes that I've had for five years and I still haven't finished them. They're only like that much finished. So I think it's a waste and sometimes I feel like perfumes can go off. I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe it's just me. So... I just go like this, I put it on my neck and then on the wrist and then I go like that 
because apparently those are the best places to put it. But yeah, it just smells like apples. It's super fruity. I think it goes with every single outfit. It's very lightweight. I do carry it in my bag because I feel like I need to reapplicate every few hours because it's quite a soft scent that goes away really easily. But you know, for the price and for the packaging and for whatever this is, it's worth it. And I think it's the perfect spring scent. So on to clothes now. Um, I love my you know shorts and short skirts and short dresses and my mom's always like you're gonna get arthritis when you're older because you never cover your knees so she made me get this three-quarter length skirt from forever new and it's kind of got like a lacy florally print on it and it's three quarters it goes around to my calves and you know what i actually absolutely love it it's so classy it's so feminine and you know i love wearing like a crop top on the top or just a jumper or a sweater or a shirt and it looks so put together and i loved it so i had to get another black one but not the same one i got this just in a random store in china it's got a grid pattern which i think it's super cool and edgy because it's a very feminine look the three quarter skirt and with this more sort of industrial print to it and the sort of sub inside bit it's kind of see-through, so you can see your knees. Ooh. Um, I feel like it's a very nice modern take on the three-quarter skirt. So this one, I love wearing with denim shirts or just a black singlet even and just layering it with gold accessories. On to music. This might be a little bit weird, but I've been obsessed with the iTunes radio. It's just in your music, and then you go to like iTunes radio, the first one there. And then, you know, you've got your 70s and Discover New Artists or whatever. And my favorite is Discover New Artists. I literally listen to this every single day. And it's got just amazing music. Um, I'll tell you some of my favorites. I think I'm on the Australian iTunes account. So if you guys are in Australia too, you can listen to the same music as me. I don't even listen to my own music anymore. I haven't had any new songs on my phone for like the past two months. So this is all I listen to. Um, I love Falling Short by Lapsley. Young by Vallis Alps. Bones by Little May. Hollywood by Tobias Junior something, I think. So those are my top four favorites at the moment on that playlist. And it just keeps going around. I think there's probably like 50 songs and they just keep replaying the same ones. And you know what? Absolutely love it. So you guys can check that out if you're sick of your old music. So you guys can go check that out if you're sick of your old music like me. It's kind of more of an indie film. It's kind of more of an indie feel. It's got quite a lot of Australian bands going through it as well. And a lot of slow, but a lot of sort of percussion-y, like, you know, so you've got a lot more acoustic piano, sort of very soft, simple pieces. But then you've also got some of that, I don't know how to describe it, like the years and years kind of electro pop kind of almost funk feel sometimes. And that's really, really cool. And I'm loving the playlist. And I'm, and that's really, really cool. And I'm loving the playlist. And it's got, and, it, and that's really, really, and that's really, really cool because I like my music to be chill, but also to have a beat to it. So if you guys are interested in that, go check out the iTunes Discover New Artist radio playlist. And you know what other skill I've picked up this month? Reading. Now, I used to be a massive bookworm when I was younger, and then I read the Twilight series, and that was probably the last books I ever, ever read because they were amazing and nothing can compare to them. But that was in year eight, and recently, a lot of my classes are sit-down classes, and I'll be sitting there for three hours, and if it's not my turn, my butt will go numb and my brain will just leak out of my ears because it's nothing to do with three hours. So I've been buying books on the iBooks app on my phone. It's just the orange one. I don't know if anybody does this, but I've been obsessed with it. I've bought, like... I bought four books this month and another book I've been reading is hashtag girl boss and it's just the owner of nasty girl Sophia and she wrote this biography bibli bibli biography about her life and it was so motivating because April was so unmotivating for me like every day going to uni was a struggle and work was just the same and I was just like Bleh. and it's just talking about how she basically went from dropping out of high school dropping out of college and taking up this security guard ID checking job in an art school um, just for the health insurance and then she didn't have a proper job and then she started going on eBay and then eBay turned to Nasty Girl and voila I won't get into the details but it's so motivational and it tells you how she got from literally the bottom all the way to the top and it's got you know other little biographies of other girls she considers girl bosses and there's a lot of good quotes in there and I've been reading it during class time funnily funnily enough funnily enough not paying attention in class and reading a book I think it's worth it and I found this new found motivation to sort of keep going for my dreams. Um, it doesn't matter if you're looking to open up a, a nasty girl or like an online store of your own or you just want to chase your dreams. I think this book is perfect for any girl to read who are sort of stuck in the awkward process of their lives right now, like my age code, 20, 21, 19, where you 
doing what you're supposed to be doing but you also feel like you want something more and you're not really sure what to do after uni or maybe you already started working and you're not sure if this is the path for you or you're wondering whether or not you should chase your dreams. I think this book is super inspirational and this month's quotes are actually all from this book so let me just take a look and look for it. Now, I love this quote because I always take pride in what I wear and a lot of people are always like, oh, you're so overdressed, like, why do you bother? It's just uni, you're just going out to the post office or something. But I think it's just, I find fashion just a way, another extension of me, like another arm. Like, I just have to get dressed up and dress how I feel and wear things that make me feel good. So I absolutely love this quote. It says, clothing is ultimately the suit of armor in which we battle the world. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, just wear whatever you want to wear. If other people say it's weird, like people have said that my outfits are weird so many times. But you know what? I do die a little on the inside, but I feel great in what I'm wearing. And I really, really like it. And I'm going to go ahead and take these OOTD snaps of my outfit and post them on my Instagram still. And another one is... This one I quite like as well. It's also from Girl Boss. It says, Don't get caught up in hanging out and drinking or partying. Celebrate when there's something to celebrate. Take pride in what you do. Don't do sloppy work. Be the best. Have something original and special to offer that makes people's lives better. So I think with our age as well right now, we kind of just go out and celebrate all the time. But it's great to have fun and, you know, party and sort of live up your life. But don't get too caught up in it as well. Like, for example, if you really, really like something special and it's really expensive like a designer item or a food or something and you get it all the time maybe once a week and you're eating that I don't know burger like once a week it's not special anymore and then after a while when you get it again you just feel like it's a normal thing does that make sense I'm not really making a lot of sense but I hope you understand but yeah I just feel like you need to celebrate when it's right time to celebrate and know when it's time to sort of celebrate yourself and because you deserve it and it, and not just because you're bored don't go out partying and drinking with your friends just because you're bored you can actually spend that time chasing your dreams and becoming a girl boss yeah I got really motivated by that book so you guys should check that book out as well well that's all I have for my April favorites I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna demonstrate how these magical whispers work. Like I said, they've got like this ring here, and sometimes it's a bit hard. You just twist it, and then this is a short end, and then you let the liquid drop over oh, my nails. So ugly, sorry. And it's there, and this bit's wet now. And then <laughs> this is really weird. And then you just kind of—I don't even know which eye I'm doing right now. Oh, it's my left eye. Okay. And you, oh, look, look—it's like magic, right? It's just all going away. So I just want to remove my eyeliner. There. And then I just get the dry bit usually and just wipe away the liquid and then probably just gently go over with a face wipe and then a face wash. Ta da! No, I'm eyeliner free. Hi guys, it's my first time. My mom is such a stressful mom. I'm so glad it's over. I had school.